OK, so we want to produce a graph. Well, you would think that you'd press the graph button in the top right hand side of the screen. What do we see? Just an axis. Well, the calculator is not a mind reader and we need to type in an equation. To do this, we need to go to the top left hand side of the handheld and press y equals. That will allow us to type in up to 10 different equations of which we can graph all 10 if we so desire. Let's type in 2x plus 1. We don't need to type in times because the calculator knows that there is a multiple between the number and the variable. x is located automatically up near the second function button, so 2x plus 1 produces this equation and can then, by pressing the graph button, produces this fantastic blue linear line. Let's say we now want to add a quadratic to the same axis. To do this, we press y equals again, scroll down to y2, and this time we'll type in x squared plus x minus 3. The beauty of the colour feature is that the linear will be in blue and the quadratic will be in red. Again, press the graph button on the top right hand side and both graphs will now appear on the screen. So we have these two graphs in beautiful colour on our screen and fantastic pixels to match, but what do we want to do with them? Well, maybe we want to find some values. Maybe we want to find the coordinates at a particular x value. Maybe we want to know where it cuts the y-axis or where the graph cuts the x-axis called the zeros. Or maybe we want to find the minimum of the graph or where two graphs intersect. To do this we need to press calculate. This is found along the top by pressing second trace. As you can see on the calculate screen we have seven choices. This time we'll choose value by pressing one or enter. We can type in any x value that we require and this will give us the coordinates at that value. To find it on the other graph, we simply press the arrow down key to find the corresponding value on the other graph. If we also want to find other values, we can use the trace key located on the top row. And using the left and right arrow, we can move along either line. This isn't as accurate and a nice application is to press table, which is second graph, and this gives us a load of table of values and conveniently will allow us to find the intersect if it is a clear number. If we want to change what the axis goes up by, we can press table set, which is second window, and that allows us to change the increments. Now moving back to calculate, let's now do the zero. This allows us to find where the quadratic crosses the x-axis. For that, as you can see down the bottom of the screen, it says to move to the left bound. We need to move to the left-hand side of where the graph crosses the x-axis. We then press Enter. It next asks us to move to the right bound. Using the arrow keys again and the Enter button, we now have a region where the zero is. We don't need to guess, so we just press the Enter key again and it will give us the zero value. A nice little feature, if we go back to the home screen by pressing second quit, is that X value is temporarily stored in the graphics calculator. By pressing X Enter, we then produce that value again on the screen. This can then be stored, pressing the button above the On key, as any variable we like. In this situation, we will store it as alpha A. This value can now be used in further calculations, which is very useful if it's not a simple short digit answer. If we want to change the view of which we see the graph, we can press window. As you can see at the moment, it is set from minus 10 to 10 in both axes. If we go back into the calculate setting again, we can see that number three is the minimum and 4 is the maximum. The process to find these two values is the same as what we did for 0. But number 5 is the intersect. This will tell us where two graphs cross. To do this we press 5 and highlight by pressing enter the first line. We then choose the second line and press enter again. If there is more than one value we need to move the cursor close to that intersect and press enter.
This will now give us the coordinates of where the two graphs cross. Up until now we've seen the graphs on a axis of minus 10 to 10 in both directions. If we want to adjust this we can do this in two ways. Firstly by going into window which is located on the top row of buttons and that allows us to change both the minimum and maximum of both the x and y axes. For example if we only wanted to show the first two quadrants we would change the y minimum to zero and then when we press graph it only shows the axes from minus 10 to 10 on the x axis and 0 to 10 on the y. The other option is to press the zoom key. This is also located along the top of the handheld. If we press zoom you can notice that number 6 is zoom standard. That puts it back to the minus 10 to 10 axes that we had originally. We also have other options like zoom in, zoom out and zoom square which is very useful if we were wanting to draw a circle so it actually is to scale rather than looking like a footy ball and zoom box which we can actually draw around a section of the graph and zoom in on that particular section. Thank you for joining me on the graphing tutorial. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.